As we've just seen, the process of digestion and absorption releases nutrients into the bloodstream. But excess nutrients, salts, minerals, and water, as well as drugs and toxins, can also enter the bloodstream through the digestive system. Further, the cells of the body release toxic waste products such as ammonia, which is converted to less toxic urea by the liver, into the bloodstream. These excess materials and drugs, toxins and wastes, if allowed to build up in the bloodstream, can threaten an individual by throwing off critical chemical balances. The blood and extracellular fluid that bathes body cells must have a close to neutral pH. Precisely regulated concentrations of various salts, appropriate levels of water and dissolved substances, and of course, cellular waste products must not be allowed to reach toxic levels. The burden of maintaining proper chemical balance or homeostasis in the body falls largely on the kidneys. Human kidneys are paired, kidney bean-shaped organs located on either side of the spinal column and extending slightly above the waist. Each is approximately 13 centimeters long, 8 centimeters wide, and 2.5 centimeters thick. Blood carrying various waste enters each kidney through a renal artery. After it has been filtered, the blood exits through the renal vein. Urine, which is a mixture of water, dissolved wastes and toxins, and some excess nutrients filtered out of the blood, leaves each kidney through a narrow muscular tube called the ureter. Peristaltic contractions drive urine through the ureter to the bladder, a hollow muscular chamber that collects and stores urine. The walls of the bladder contain smooth muscle capable of considerable expansion. Urine is retained in the bladder by two sphincter muscles located at its base, just above the juncture with the urethra. When the bladder becomes distended, receptors in the walls trigger reflexive contractions. The sphincter nearest the bladder, the internal sphincter, is open during these contractions. However, the lower or external sphincter is under voluntary control, so the reflex can be suppressed by the brain unless bladder distension becomes acute. The average adult bladder will hold about 500 milliliters or approximately a pint of urine, but the urge to urinate is triggered by considerably smaller accumulations. Urine completes its journey to the outside through a single narrow tube called the urethra. The kidney contains a solid outer layer where urine is formed and a hollow inner chamber called the renal pelvis, which is a branched collecting chamber that funnels urine into the ureter. The outer layer of the kidney is divided into a fan-shaped inner renal medulla and an overlying renal cortex. Microscopic examination of these structures reveals an array of tiny individual filters or nephrons. Over one million nephrons are packed into the cortex of each kidney, with many extending into the renal medulla. Blood is conducted to each nephron by an arteriole that branches from the renal artery. Within a cup-shaped portion of the nephron, the Bowman's capsule, the arteriole branches into a network of approximately 50 microscopic capillaries that form an intertwined mass, the glomerulus. The arteriole leaving the glomerulus is smaller in diameter than the one coming in, creating pressure within the structure that forces water and many dissolved substances such as urea, glucose, salts, amino acids, and certain vitamins through its extremely permeable capillary walls in a process called filtration. The resulting fluid, called filtrate, is collected in the Bowman's capsule for transport through the tubule. 